guys. So today we are going to ink this piece here using the Liquitex Muted Pink ink that was sent in my October box. This is on the Art Snacks uh, Inktober paper. Uh, I am going to remove it from the notebook because I really, the spirals really get in the way. Um, other than that, the materials I'm going to use are a cup of clean water, a, jib, a G nib and a Tachikawa and a Tachikawa uh, nib holder and a dinky dip, mostly because um, the spottle, while generous, is a little bit difficult to dip into. So I am going to remove my page and prepare my setup. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, guys, so my workspace is prepared. I have a piece of scrap paper here. I've gone ahead and put my ink into a dinky dip and I've got my water over here. I've cut my um, paper out of my notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and get to inking. I'm going to work on this in time lapse and then recap my thoughts on the Liquitex ink for you guys later on. A portion of this to make a couple of notes. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm inking this on the Denik paper that was included in my Inktober sketch box. That was the paper I feel like that Art Snacks was recommending we use by their inclusion of it in the box. Now in that box were some Kurotake Seije nibs. So to me, it seems like the paper they included should have should be able to work with nibs. That said, I'm having a lot of problems right now with my nib cutting through the paper. I am using a G nib, but in other demonstrations, I was also using a G nib, but with the Sumi Ink 60, which wasn't cutting through the paper as much. It did to an extent, but the sort of bleed through is, well, that's pretty extensive. Um, something I was thinking about was perhaps the Liquitex ink is keeping the paper wet longer than perhaps the Sumi ink did, uh, making it more prone to tear tearing or weakening the fibers until it's dry. So that is a thought. Now I know most of you are probably not going to be using this ink on this paper. I just thought it was worth noting for those of you who might enjoy inking on cardstocks. Um, and to be frank, I don't know how many of you are actually using a nib on cardstock that is not recommended, but the weight of this paper is that type of weight. So I thought it was worth noting. Now it does go down this dark, almost um, old blood color. It dries much lighter. It is a beautiful color. Um, uh, I look forward to seeing how this piece looks when it's finished. I am going to need to play around with this though to, uh, so I know that acrylic ink is waterproof. Unfortunately on this Denik paper, I can't use watercolor. It's just not gonna take it. I would like to add color of some sort and I might just end up doing a, a ink wash using the acrylic ink and a brush. We'll see, but I do feel like given how light the ink is some color does need to be introduced, but we'll um, go into that when we're further along in the piece. I just wanted to go ahead and make those notes before I forgot or before I got so frustrated that all that was coming out of my mouth was unintelligible complaints. So I'm going to, oh, and another suggestion I have, if you are inking with this acrylic ink on this sort of paper that isn't really designed for inking, um, you do need to stop every now and then and dry. Uh, usually I will work from left to right, but in general, I also like to work from foreground to background. So that's sort of what I'm doing. Um, I am trying to give it time to dry though. So uh, I will resume the time lapse, time lapse portion now.
Okay, so again, I'm pausing the time lapse to point out a big problem that I'm having right here with bleeding. Um, and bleeding in this instance usually occurs when the paper fibers have been cut, perhaps by a nib, um, and the liquid sort of seeps out into the surrounding fibers. Now, um, it looks it looks pretty rough. The only thing that's really holding that together is the graphite underneath, which will probably not ever be able to be erased since the, the acrylic is basically acting like a sealant on top of it. I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to try to tighten it up a bit. Since it does dry so light, I feel like there's an opportunity for building up uh, color and um, importance. That's one of the reasons why I actually stay away from colored inks is because you'll get different depths of color and sometimes I don't feel like inking something multiple times. Um, anyway, I thought this was something also important to point out to those of you who might be interested in using this ink for um, nib use, like for calligraphy or for inking art pieces. Okay guys, so this is the first layer of inks. Um, as you can see, it pretty significantly bled through the Denik paper. I'm gonna let this dry for 24 hours, erase my pencils, and then I may see you guys again if I decide to tighten this up any. So we'll see tomorrow. All right, guys, this has had a chance to dry overnight, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase the graphite. And I'll do that in time-lapse, zoomed in, so you guys can see if I encounter any problems. I've gotten most of the uh, most of the graphite up off of the paper. Um, it still does look like there is some, partially because the um, the acrylic ink that I put down, the uh, Liquitex Liquitex ink, has basically sealed the graphite in. You also notice that the paper is quite warped. Um, that's because this Denik paper is just really not designed to take 
uh, inking very well. I mean, if you were to ink something like this with these issues um, and this much warping, you, you couldn't use this as a commission. Um, so, you know, I really don't recommend it. But we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually ink over this in spots to uh, build up definition because I did a little test last night here on the wrist and I realized that I could get better detail um, if I went over it again and that you can indeed ink over it again and it's not going to tear the paper as badly as it did the first time, I guess because the acrylic forms a seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in time-lapse as well and then I'll check in with you guys. So in trying to go over these inks, I'm getting an effect that I can only really describe as, it looks like bruising to be honest. And it's um, due to the color of the ink mixed with it uh, feathering out into the paper. It is particularly apparent down there, which these areas weren't as damaged before. So while you can layer this ink, the Danik paper is just really, not at all suitable for this sort of work. Oh, hang on, I turned it upside down for you guys. Um, so that's a shame because I thought it was a pretty cute illustration. Um, I will let it dry and I guess just, <clears throat> just be done with it because I don't want to make it even worse. As you guys can see though, the muted pink is, um, it's actually showing up a little bit darker on the camera than it is in real life. Um, so uh, it is an interesting color and it might be very good for sort of skin tones or antique sort of looking stuff. I'd love to get my hands on the muted purple as well because that seems really useful. Um, and since it is an acrylic ink, we can use it with watercolors. And I'm sort of leaning in that direction for the upcoming Sketchbox versus Art Snacks challenge. I think I'm just gonna use everything together. So thank you guys so much for watching this demonstration of Liquitex Muted Pink Ink. This is a limited edition product, but it's a beautiful color. So I'm hoping they will consider adding more colors like this to their lineup. These sort of colors are very useful for many artists. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, take a moment to hit like and let me know that you liked it. If you have any questions or suggestions other than paper suggestions, because I know this paper is not really ideal for this use, um, leave me a comment below. Let me know. If it's something that needs demonstrating, I'll try to get on it as soon as possible. Um, if you're interested in more inking stuff, check out my advanced inking techniques playlist. Um, and if you want even more than that, head on over to the blog at natasoup.blogspot.com for you know seven years worth of tutorials, and many of which are inking tutorials, uh, completed while I was taking the advanced inking course at SCAD as part of my master's degree. If you would like to help support this channel, there are a few ways you can do it. You can share this video with your friends and family on social networks using the social network sharing buttons down below. Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, all of those are great places, helpful places to share, and you'd be doing me a huge favor. Another way you can help me out is if you're interested in having a teaching artist come to teach your class if you're in the Tennessee or Louisiana areas. Uh, we can make arrangements for in-person visits. Or if you're anywhere else, we can make arrangements for Skype visits. Just get in contact with me and we'll work something out regarding that as well. Um, if you would like to help financially support this channel or the blog, head on over to the Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. Patreon.com slash natosoup for information on how to join the community. Thank you guys so much for watching this demonstration. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.